Hey, what's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to my F1 2018 season mod career mode here with Fernando Alonso and his McLaren Renault for episode number four, round number four at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix here in Baku. Guys, if you did miss round number three, be sure to go check that one out before you see this one uploaded just about a week ago. I don't know if it had any kind of publishing issues because it did really poorly compared to episode two and just in general seemed like it didn't publish properly. I think that's maybe because I had it scheduled like a whole week in advance because I was actually on holiday whilst that episode went up. So it might have been due to that but for whatever reason I think a lot of you guys might have missed it so be sure to check that one out before you continue on to this one because that was a really great Grand Prix a lot of action there and another great result for us and hopefully we can carry that forward onto the Azerbaijan Grand Prix maybe a little bit more difficult for us because obviously it's a it's a fine balance of you know straight line speed and cornering speed and for us that compromise has never been quite there versus the AI but we'll try our best as always but let's get to the uh, full starting grid before we get into the race. Right, so here we are for the starting grid for the 2018 Azerbaijan Grand Prix after the entire grid did qualifying yesterday on a Saturday here. And round number four goes to Sebastian Vettel, pole position for the man in red there, alongside Valtteri Bottas. Surprisingly, Hamilton, after being so consistent three poles in a row, is not even on the front row there. He has to take place in third spot alongside Kimi Raikkonen, the second of the Ferrari guys in fourth place there on the second row of the grid. The third row of the grid is occupied by Dan Ricciardo in his Red Bull, and then alongside him, Roman Grosjean in his Haas doing a wonderful job to out-qualify the likes of Max Verstappen and also both McLaren cars, of course, one being myself as Fernando Alonso. Max Verstappen, speaking of him, he's in seventh place there, so again out-qualified by his teammate Ricardo and Kevin Magnussen lines up beside him, so the Red Bulls and Haas is kind of lying and stern there in a pattern. And then in ninth and tenth place, surprisingly, is Pierre Gasly and Brennan Hartley. Upgrade to the Toro Rosso team and a boost after the, a bit of a tweak to the mod, so ninth to tenth for them uh, in the Toro Rosso Honda-powered cars. Meanwhile, behind, just outside the top 10, 11th and 12th place for myself as Fernando Alonso and my teammate Stoffel Van Dorn there in the other McLaren. Nico Hulkenberg takes up 13th place ahead of Sergio Perez in 14th there. So the Renault boys slumping a little bit, maybe lacking a bit of straight line speed with a bit more drag maybe on their car, trying to get performance in the corners. As I said, a compromise there is needed around Baku. Carlos Sainz in 15th place then, and Espen Ocon in 16th. And then the usual suspects at the back of the grid then. Charles Leclerc does out-qualify his teammate Marcus Ericsson for 17th to 18th place respectively. And then the last row of the grid really. Williams been an utter misery for them so far in 2018 and they just appear to be going nowhere. Sergei Sopkin takes up 19th place and Lance Stroll in 20th and that is the starting grid for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So in P11 then on the grid behind both Toros and Honda cars after they received a bit of an update in the mod there. So we're going to have to do some work to try and overtake them and try and take the fight if we can to the likes of Haas and maybe even the Red Bull cars if they get caught up once again. And it looks like it's a straight fight between Ferrari and Mercedes really right at the front around here. It's going to be a pretty straightforward strategy. A one-stop it looks like potentially with super soft to the soft tyres. But there is the potential for a two-stop which is not much slower on the delta time. It might be faster for us if we hit tyre wear. But let's get into this then. We go to five red lights for round number four of the 2018 season for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's underway for 26 laps around Baku and it's initially a great start there. We have to lift off though, trying to get to the inside there and not cream to the back of Brendan Hartley in the first of the Toros cars. Meanwhile, Gasly up ahead trying to overtake Kevin Magnussen who's had a bit of a sluggish start there. We're down the inside of uh, Brendan Hartley. Lock up, uh, double lock up and trying not to hit the curbing too hard on the left hand side and now it's a bit of a drag race. It's Renault v Honda Power and it looks like actually Brendan Hartley's maybe got a little bit less aero on the car than I do. I definitely have maybe a bit more wing than some of these guys trying to get some downforce in the corners uh, to try and help us out obviously but we're now we're going to try maybe switch it to the inside to overtake Gassi so we've already taken Hartley. Can we take the other Toro Rosso car? It's going to be close. Gassi for now getting pinned behind Magnussen so Magnussen might help me out almost. We dive around the outside trying to find the grip there. Gasly a little bit into the wall there. Very, very close stuff. It tightens up that corner on the right hand a lot more than you ever think it does on the entry there. But we do get it eventually just before the castle section, which is always usually a single file kind of section. So good that we got that move made. And we're up into ninth place there. But it looks like we will have a fight on our hands to really move up any more on this grid. Although I think we will get a good slingshot around this next right hand. Obviously, even with the 2018 mod, yeah, this circuit is just, it's like, I've said it so many times, it's like a motorway in terms of the amount of slipstream you get down this main straight. It's just, it's ridiculous. So you, we can't overtake the Haas here with the Ferrari power, even though in the back of his car, and we're up into P8 now. And up ahead, it's Max Verstappen, who looks like he's had a very slow start there. I think Grosjean is even ahead of the next man, Ricardo. So I think Grosjean has actually 
fighting, maybe trying to overtake one of the Ferrari guys. Maybe I'm guessing Kimi Raikkonen, or it might be Vettel, you never know, off pole position. You might have had a shocker at the start, but no, it's the, the, the two Red Bull cars who are up next and up ahead. Yes, indeed. I think that's, yeah, look at that. Grosjean is trying to overtake one of the Ferrari cars. Can't quite, quite tell which one it is, but uh, head straight ahead of us is the two Red Bull cars going side by side. Verstappen trying to act, attack his teammate round the outside of turn one. Ricardo gives him the elbows there. They go side by side. Verstappen's not having any of it, and he's going to try and pull this off. They're still going side by side into the next straight. We'll have a DRS for Verstappen, and I think Ricardo. I don't think he's got enough. Uh, has he? Yes, I think he does. Yeah, he's within one second to have DRS there. And I think Verstappen actually didn't play his cards right. I think Verstappen didn't get DRS, but somehow he's still there on the outside. But Ricardo finally gets it through. He has to slot in behind. Max Verstappen does. And so he's going to have to stay put. But you can see now as we enter the castle section on lap three, virtual safety guards called out. But before that, you can see visually we caught up so much with those two fighting. So really good. I, I actually want Verstappen and Ricardo to fight some more, please, because then we could try and overtake both of them if we're lucky. But on the on the restart of the virtual safety car, I kind of timed that uh, pretty much to perfection there. We've got a really nice uh, shot now at gaining on Verstappen with the DRS. Rich mix as well. Yellow flags, though, into turn one. I think it was Charter Claire that was uh, out of this Grand Prix, unfortunately, for him in one of the Sauber Alfa Romeo cars. But now we're right at the back of Verstappen. And it's nose to tail between Ricardo Verstappen and myself. As we go down this straight, we'll have DRS. Verstappen will have DRS. Will the Dutchman try and overtake the Aussie man again? We'll try it on the outside uh, second time Lucky almost for Stappen on the outside. Ricardo again going to pinch him. And this time again, just like before, he has to slot in behind. But now here we come, trying to make a move on the outside. If we can, being opportunistic with Verstappen. A little bit uh, getting the elbows out for us on the left-hand side. We're almost squeezed completely into the wall. But we've still got the space. So thankfully, Verstappen is playing a little bit nicer. We do a bit of a switchback move as he goes over the curbing there. Loses a bit of momentum on the curbing. And so we're on the inside now. We should have the better line into the castle section. But Verstappen is still there, despite me pushing hard to push him into the wall on the left-hand side. He's still there. I'm going to have to back out of this. I can't go to the inside, but Verstappen, oh my god! Verstappen has absolutely bottled it into the castle section. He's plowed straight on into the wall, and surely he's out of this Grand Prix. Um, I'm not too sure, but Gasly has been caught up there. And let's look at a replay. You can see here Wow, what a crash that is. I literally completely backed out of that because as I was saying, saying in the commentary, I couldn't have possibly made that work around the outside. So I knew better. I knew to break early and try and just tuck in behind and follow Verstappen through. I didn't think I'd be doing a, a pretty amazing switchback move almost basically effectively on Verstappen as he plowed through in the wall. And look at the carnage he's ensued. He's held up about 10 cars there, including my teammate, unfortunately, who uh, has to do a bit of parallel parking and a bit of three-point turn or five-point turn there in that castle section. Unfortunately for Pierre Gasly, uh, unlike the real-life bar in Grand Prix, I don't think he'll be uh, as soaring to any heights now as he's lost a bit of his front wing there uh, whilst also doing pretty much a copycat crash with Verstappen. I think Verstappen put him off uh, effectively. But now onto lap seven, Ricardo came in and a lap later, I'm in now. Very early pit stop and Ricardo is onto a set of super soft tyres, I can tell you. So he's doing a two stop, two sets of super softs to one set of soft tyres. I, at this stage, thought I'll try and follow him, but I'll reverse it. I'll go onto soft tyres here because this will open us up to potentially still pulling off the one stop. Now, ideally, I wanted to go to about lap 11, lap 12 to make the one stop work. We've gone three laps earlier to lap eight. So the one stop is still possible. It just might mean that we're kind of almost like Sebastian Vettel uh, was in the real life bar in Grand Prix. We might be very crucial on the rear tyres by the end of this Grand Prix. The rear tyre wear has been so, so poor on the super soft tyres. So that was also another reason why I wanted to come in not only to match Ricardo and maybe try and do a two stop to match him or move it to a one stop but also I was just losing almost a second on those super softs at the end there because the rear tyres went off the cliff completely and you can see it's a good decision because I'm already catching back to Brendan Hartley and he's yet to make a pit stop here and remember he, he out qualified us so he has better one lap pace than us and we're catching back up to him and he's yet to make a stop in this Grand Prix so good decision from me I feel personally. Uh, in my opinion, that we made that stop a little bit earlier. And the one stop is is still on, potentially. We'll have to see where we are on track, what the clean air situation's like. But at the moment, we're now trying to catch up to, once again, the man from New Zealand in the Toro Rosso Honda. And we've got DRS here, going to get in a slipstream. We're going to move to the right, going to fake to the right, move to the left. Uh, Hartley, a little bit gingerly there, almost blocking us, and a bit of contact's made there. But all fair game down the inside now. We've got a little bit deeper contact, a bit more contact was made there. Got the elbows out of the FIF with that and we're up into P7 now next man is Dan Ricardo, of course who came in for an early pit stop he's on super soft tyres remember though so he will theoretically
practically be faster as we come down into turn one now. Lap 12, there is Roman Grosjean. So Ricardo has managed to jump Grosjean then in that pit stop phase by pulling off the two stop here. Obviously, Ricardo uh, has to make one more pit stop in this Grand Prix. I'm right behind Grosjean. I wasn't I wasn't initially before the pit stops, remember. So now as we dive down the inside here, uh, you know, we've gained a lot of time on the undercut effectively. And if I can get past Grosjean, you know, I still have the opportunity to maybe take this through to the end of the Grand Prix. Obviously, he'll come back at us already right now, but he'll come back at us at the end of the Grand Prix with a bit of fresher tyres, but he's putting up a great fight right now on lap 12, and uh, a bit of contact was made initially there, so Grosjean and Verstappen getting a bit frosty with me in that right-hand in the second sector there, but we do get it through eventually, and we're up into P6. Hamilton, the next one ahead, so Ricardo's also jumped Hamilton, so Ricardo, if he has enough good pace, he could pull off a uh, pretty good damn uh, two-stop here. I do not have the pace, unfortunately, though, I don't think, to pull off the same kind of lofty heights as he might be able to do. Meanwhile, for the lead of the Grand Prix, Bottas was leading. It's now Kimi Raikkonen, the Finn on Finn action, and Kimi now leads the way. But Vettel in fourth place there behind Lewis Hamilton after he makes his pit stop there. So Vettel from pole position down to fourth place there. So struggles for him, but he's going to try and overtake Hamilton now on the right-hand side of Hamilton on the inside to defend. And these two obviously major rivals in the 2017 season and the real-life 2018 season as well. And Vettel on the outside, Hamilton on the inside. And there's pretty much nothing to separate these two. They're so, so equally matched there. Hamilton obviously maybe with a bit of a straight-line speed advantage. Vettel seemingly a little bit more... Uh, lighter in the corners maybe to get the acceleration down and those two are still neck and neck with even with Vettel getting DRS there we didn't see a clip of it but these two have both passed Ricardo so Ricardo was initially ahead of Hamilton here but now he's been overtaken but these two fighting will now re-help Ricardo basically get back into this because initially it wasn't looking great actually Ricardo's pace dropped off quite significantly on the super soft tires but now these two fighting like this hammering tong look at that absolutely awesome stuff between these two titans of Formula One and Vettel is uh, going to be the victor in in this mini battle here but that has definitely helped Ricardo out maybe uh, just a little bit in the two stop he's doing and at this stage I'm thinking more and more about the two stop whilst for the race lead Valtteri Bottas gets it back on Kimi Raikkonen so the Finns are swapping positions left right and centre every single lap so far in the middle of this Grand Prix and speaking of uh, switching to that one stop we move on to lap 15 here and Ricardo is going to come in now for his final pit stop onto soft tyres we go up into fifth place uh, Grosjean behind us he's going to the end everyone else ahead of us going to the end and so pretty much I'm deciding right here and right now I am going to go to the end of this Grand Prix so we're going to have to go a lot longer you know 10 more laps and the tyres are about 25% to 31% more on the rear tyres uh, the fronts aren't a worry it's really just the rear tyres but I mean the rears at the moment they're 25% and we've done you know about half the stint length we need to so I think we should just about maybe be okay it's, it might be a bit of fighting to do right at the end to maybe fend off Grosjean but I think if we can finish in P5 that'll be a fantastic result for us considering where we qualified and also just the circumstances of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix how good usually the AI are I would take that uh, for sure and now we move on to a replay now Vettel after overtaking Hamilton got the bit between his teeth there he's now caught up to his teammate Kimi Raikkonen who is uh, falling a little bit away from Valtteri Bottas in the lead and he's looking pretty comfortable at the moment Bottas is in Vettel and Raikkonen do a swap I suggest there probably won't be too much infighting between those two and I think Ferrari usually put all their eggs in one basket for the championship especially with the lead that Vettel has in the championship at the moment over Valtteri Bottas after of course Hamilton only uh, winning one race uh, so far and it took him three races to the last round at the Bahrain Grand Prix to actually convert one of his pole positions to a win and now we move on to the very next lap and you can see clearly there Vettel now into the lead pretty damn easy stuff actually for the German there uh, up into the lead and then meanwhile later on Bottas hits a bit of uh, issues there with Lance Stroll that is being lapped and Bottas there in second place he's got damage to his front wing and I suggest he's probably going to be falling back now Raikkonen is just waiting and being patient at the moment in P3 Hamilton the same in P4 and we're coming out to, we're coming out to that same back marker here hopefully I do not uh, have issues with Stroll like Bottas just did into the castle section nice and easy obviously you can see on the mini map there Grosjean still very much behind as you can see just about in the left mirror there he's in the background so he's keeping us honest Grosjean is so it may seem like a pretty straightforward uh, stint length now for us but this entire time I have to keep up the pace because otherwise Grosjean will be right on the back of me so keep me honest for sure uh, this entire time with only six laps to go now in this Grand Prix and now we've got Hamilton overtaking Bottas pretty inevitable there with all these guys going to the end of the Grand Prix Bottas no chance in making a pit stop to change that front wing and so he's going 
so slower and slower in the corners. And so Hamilton up into P3. Good recovery for him after initially being quite slow in the first in this Grand Prix. But it's going to be Sebastian Vettel still leading the way. And a 1-2 for Ferrari at the moment as we move on towards the last half of the Grand Prix. For us, you can see we're hitting very, very bad tyre wear now. Around 60-odd uh, percent there on the rear tyres. Fronts actually are pretty okay. It's actually ridiculous how bad the rears are compared to the fronts here. Now into the, into the first corner of the last lap, lap 26 here of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Grosjean is right up our gearbox here. We've got a bit of fuel. We used a lot of it down that main straight. It really burned quite fast and now we've only got a tiny bit left to use in Rich Mix. We go down the second straight here with Grosjean with DRS here on the left-hand side. He's going to surely try and have a look on the left-hand side here. We're on the right. We'll turn to the inside eventually in the next part of the track here. So just give him the room and try and threaten the car as fast as we can. We do have that. Grosjean has to tuck in behind and I think that's pretty much the worst that we can expect because we're down to lead mix just to try and save some more fuel just for the end because I say that was probably the last. Uh, Grosjean might have a final chance through the S section here if he gets a good enough slingshot but as I said we went to lean mixture, uh, played a bit strategically because now we can go to rich mix right at the end here, toggle rich to standard just so we go across the line and that will be confirmation there. P5 for us ahead of Grosjean beating both Red Bull cars. That is a a uh, very successful Grand Prix for us as Fernando Alonso in the McLaren and another good haul of points. And obviously, as we saw earlier from the replays, Van Dorn uh, pretty much out of the points completely after being taken out uh, due to that Verstappen incident there. So we're the uh, sole points earners uh, and, the, and the breadwinners here for McLaren today at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Uh, another good one, though. And uh, I think the consistency so far with the McLaren has been great. The pace hasn't been amazing. I mean, I, I, I really can't take the fight at the moment to the top boys, but the consistency of the car has been great. Uh, the only kind of big issue was some tyre wear at the end of that super soft stint but overall the car pretty damn good to drive in terms of it's it's not giving me any kind of you know uh, worries or surprises kind of mid corner any points in the, in the Grand Prix if, if there's any kind of mistake it's just due to me maybe overdriving the car a little bit or over the curbings but apart from that really can't complain but there is Sebastian Vettel for a 1-2 for Ferrari there in first place Raikkonen in second and Hamilton as I said in third place after Bottas's issues with the front wing there uh, behind Grosjean was Danny Ricciardo in seventh place so in the end, his two-stop just didn't work. Brennan Hartley, fantastic result for him in eighth place then with the Toro Rosso boys. Sergio Perez still trying to bring the Force India some points, actually, and he's done a great job there. Uh, obviously, I think it was Ocon last time that got points for Force India, so he's done a great job for the team there. And Verstappen, despite that huge crash, he actually was still in the Grand Prix and he managed to finish 10th there, so... Fair play. Also, maybe not the best karma for him because I, I, I honestly don't know how that's happened. But yeah, he somehow still managed to get that. Uh, but in the Drivers' Championship then, Vettel extends his lead at the top. Hamilton closes up to Bottas somewhat, but still quite a gulf between the two Mercedes guys. We're still ahead of both Red Bull cars in fifth place there, ahead of Ricciardo, who now jumps Max Verstappen there. And Brendan Hartley sees himself crop up into the top 11 there in 10th place. In the Constructors, it all stays put. The only swap there is between Toro Rosso and Renault. Renault, again, having a really dismal Grand Prix and they really are going to need to hope for some upgrades or some luck really. Uh, probably more luck than anything uh, soon to kind of get them some good points there. And you can see we're ahead of Red Bull and Haas in third place there. Kind of mimicking what McLaren have done in real life so far after round two in the real life season there. So pretty nice for us but you can see the gulf that there is between third and then the top two of Mercedes and Ferrari there. So um, we're going to all have to hope uh, you know there's maybe a bit more upgrades for the kind of lower teams than maybe the top teams We'll see. We'll see how everything develops and how the luck can maybe swing back and forth. That's been a really, really solid and fun Azerbaijan Grand Prix, actually, for round number four of the season there. So, guys, if you did enjoy it, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, do get subscribed for weekly full-on content. I've been over. Hope you enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.